I'm being joined on the program by the chairman of the Senate Committee on INEC and the former governor of Kano State, Senator Kabir Gaya. He joins us from Abuja, you know. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us tonight. The last time you Good were on the program, you. yeah, Senator, you made a promise to me and uh, my audience on this program, and you said that the next time you'll be on the program, you'll give us a very good news about the Electoral Act Amendment. There are about two or three times people have gone to the National Assembly to protest that where is the Electoral Act Amendment? And the reason people are agitated about the amendment to the Electoral Act is because of the elections. They want an election that is credible, free, and fair. Yeah. And the only way to do that yeah. is the enabling law to make that happen. It seems so much that things are quiet on the Electoral Act Amendment. Where are we at, Senator? Well, so we are on track. And you remember I came here uh, last time and uh, we had a discussion on this Electoral Act. And I told you that uh, we from the National Assembly have promised the Nigerian that we get the act uh, from our own side passed and then expect to send it to the president. And uh, we are working on it. For now that the committee has done its part, it's just for us to present to the uh, National Assembly, that is the Senate, on the floor of the Senate for discussions. And once that is done, it means we will do concurrence with the House of Rep, whereby both the House of Rep chairman and the committee members of electoral uh, election committee, uh, then with the start of the Senate, we are going to, uh, we are working together as a team. So therefore, there is not like coming up to do either harmonization or whatever. Whatever bill we have is going is the same thing will be produced from the House. So we are on track now. We are we will we'll be back in the next two weeks, and within those two weeks, uh, two weeks period after our resumption, we'll be able to get the bill passed. And I assure you that uh, uh, all our members in the Senate, representatives from all parts of the country, will go through the bill and give us they give us their blessing for it to be passed. But I think we did a lot of work for almost uh, a year on this job, and uh, I, I I believe we came out with something good. For Senator. Yeah, you are on track, but it seems you are, your movement is a bit slow uh, because the last time, the timeline seems to be shifting every other time. You are almost two months from my calculation from the timeline you set. And, you know, last year you told me by March, you should have gotten over with. Of, you know, we're not out of track, but you have to also remember the, the, how the Senate works. There are a lot of other bills in the process. And uh, online, like we have the, the PIB bill, which is just a bill that will generate funds for the nation. Uh, it's also very important. We also have the Constitutional Review Committee, which is also extremely important because there are some issues in the Electoral Act that even if you pass the Electoral Act, you find that the Constitution needs to amend those sections. So I, I, I believe what we are doing, we, all the most important is not a matter of time we spend, but giving a good job or a good product out. It's not a matter of how long you stay on a, on a product, but producing a good one. And I believe that we are producing a good one. So, so uh, I've been telling Nigerians that uh, we are on track and we'll be able to deliver by God's grace. Uh, so, I mean, perhaps this is not the first time I've been following up an electoral amendment process, even the ones that were signed and the public didn't know what was happening and never got used for an election. That one went like that. But Nigerians are more concerned now about the process because of the elections. They want to be involved in electing, the, they want to be involved in determining their future, electing those who will determine the future, the leaders that will lead them. And so they, are in, they, are, they want to be more involved in what is happening. So the question now is that there's been a lot of suspicion from Nigerians because when you told me last time that March it will be go, uh, you, you'll get it over with, and in March, after March, you said, oh, in another one or two months, it will. Uh, so I guess that's the reason for the suspicion from, na from some Nigerians. Can you now give us some well, kind of precise date that Nigerians should expect it? Because there is an election in November in Anambra. People think that we might be able to use the el amended electoral act to execute that election. Isn't that getting too late? When can we precisely get these over the line? You see, what, what, what we do in the National Assembly is produce the, the bill, the act. And then after that, we pass the president to sign. So I'm telling you, we are on track. We are not losing uh, the position. And we are not telling Nigerians that we'll do this and we're delaying it. No, we are not. 
uh, the, we have the, as I told you, we have other bills that we are processing, but the, the Electoral Act is very important so that we can have cred pre credible uh, election uh, so that Nigerians could be happy that they are voting who they, who, who they want and they are getting the result as they decided, uh, not as somebody decides for them. So I, 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 I believe, uh, say, we are on track and we are not uh, shifting the goalpost. We have remained there, and we are going to make sure that we get it done. Uh, the amendment is virtually over. It's just for the committee to give us a date, or the Senate uh, committee to give us a date when to present the, the, the bill on the floor. And we are just waiting for that time. And uh, I'm sure we have a PIB after that one. They go to our one. Then the constitutional review. I believe within the next uh, few days, as we resume, we'll be able to start on these bills. Uh, because, you know, uh, Senator, you're politicians of several years. And one of the things you always say down in your campaign is that the people should be able to hold it to account. You're accountable to the people. And so uh, the question I want to know is we want a precise date or week or time of the month that you will get this out of the National Assembly. Can you promise Nigerians, can you give us that date? We are in June of 2021, the sixth month of the year. Yeah. And yet, we do not have a yeah. word on it. So give us a precise date, if that is the only thing that you will tell us tonight, Senator. Well, I agree with you, but I'm not the presiding officer in the Senate. But they are the, the presiding officer decide on when to submit this. But I'm telling you that I'm ready, my committee is ready now. If I submit, uh, uh, as soon as we come back from this break, I will do so. So I'm just waiting for, uh, for the date when the Senate gives us the date to lay it on the floor of the Senate. But let me reassure you that all, even the president officer, the Senate president, everybody in the leadership and all of our senators are committed to getting this bill passed. So uh, let Nigerians be rest assured that we'll get it passed within... Well, if you are putting pressure on me, I'm telling you we're we are going to get it within, uh, within next month's latest. And uh, I, I believe that uh, by that time, when the bill comes out, then Nigeria will be a bit happier with what we have. Okay, next month, we're in June. Next month is July. And hopefully, but in July also, we'll give it to you first week in August when we will try to invite you again on the program and get an update. But let's look into something well, by also. The by the time you, you invite me in August, I will come the bill passed by the Senate. And then I hope before the end, the President would have signed on the bill. Uh, because I, the, I'm sure we have worked together with the people from the Office of the Attorney General and the opinions are there for whatever we have in the bill. Uh, therefore, even if the President will request the opinion of the Attorney General from his office, definitely they were part of the, the, the meeting we had, all technical committee meetings we had, and I believe they will agree with what we have in that bill. So therefore, there may not be any obstacle on getting another second opinion on, on, on the bill because they are part of the parcel of our discussion throughout the process of uh, the amendment or the enacting of the Electoral Act. One very worrisome situation is the attacks on INEC facilities across the country. We're seeing mm. uh, 41 or 42 of those attacks in just one year. And INEC has warned that it will affect the operations in delivering credible elections. What are you doing as a Senate committee that has an oversight over this commission? Yeah, first of all, it's unfortunate for, uh, for INEC officers being burnt down. Uh, these are property of the federal government and property of all Nigerians. That This is a place where elections are conducted or at least results of collection are compiled for, for, for deliberators national headquarters. And therefore, it's an important building. But for Nigerians to go around and burn these INEC offices is going to affect in spending more money of, out of taxpayers' money to rebuild another one and then be able to now equip it. I, I, I believe, I appeal to all Nigerians who are, all the hooligans who are doing this kind of uh, attack on INEC offices and the police stations, I think it's not fair. It's not even, it's not even in the interest of, the, of any Nigerian because nobody will be happy with what is happening. And I appeal to them that they have to stop. And then for those found wanting, I think the law should take uh, its due course. And from the INEC office, uh, the headquarters, we invited the chairman, we discussed with him. 
And they said, well, it is unfortunate this is happening. Uh, they can only rely on the police security and the few security they employed. But definitely they cannot be able to man the security of all the police headquarters in the uh, police offices in the 774 local governments. It's uh, quite difficult, but I'm just appealing to uh, Nigerians that banning a property of a federal government which belongs to them too uh, is uncalled for. Um, today, so which, uh, the, which means now, which means now we have to look for for the funds to re rebuild those offices, which was not in our budget. Which means we now have to find ways in which INEC should now find ways of getting money to rebuild these uh, offices. First of all, some of our offices are also need renovation, but now we have some offices being burned down about 45. And that's a lot, uh, a large number, and that is a lot of money we're spending on that uh, project. So therefore, I am I'm appealing to Nigerians who are grieved, please do peaceful demonstration. Don't ban government properties. Don't, because those properties are in your location. They are the, your properties. And when you ban them, you are banning government property. You are banning where uh, people who so buy elections or be able to conduct elections, and you don't want them to conduct elections in that constituency. Uh, I know we may find it a bit difficult in trying to uh, rebuild those things, but it, we'll, we'll do our best before the 23 elections and complete those buildings. Give us an update on what is happening. There seems to be some disagreement on the floor of the Senate today uh, when uh, the Senate President was asking your committee to consider the screening of uh, the uh, aid to the President on social media, uh, Loretta Honor Chair. Uh, which uh, the Senate Minority Leader raised an objection over. Um, uh, what is the stance of the committee on that appointment or the nomination of that appointment? Well, the Senate is a place where you express your opinions, your own opinion for the interests of your own people. And uh, you are free to say anything you think uh, that from your own view, uh, you have a reason for, do, for saying so. But to us as committee members, the Senate just submit this name or forward the name to our committee today. Uh, so definitely, uh, previous uh, month, it was not in our hands, so we had nothing we could do. Now they have submitted to our committee. The committee will sit down and look at these uh, members submitted to us, some are national commissioners, some are electoral commissioners. We'll look at those uh, positions and then do justice what we are supposed to do. And I, I assure you that the law is there. And uh, the standard is a place where you can debate and uh, raise your opinion based on what is by the law. So therefore, we will look at uh, the names that are submitted to us today. And we will call a meeting and discuss with members of, uh, uh, the members of the INEC committee from the Senate and then screen those candidates. Those okay, are eligible to pass, we'll pass them. Those are not eligible to pass, we'll, we'll submit the list to the Senate uh, for the further deliberation. And that's the procedure. Okay, so uh, talking about the procedure, so this, the, the uh, minority, some of the reference the, the being made... The minority made... leader... Yeah. Please go ahead, Senator. Hello? Please go ahead, the Senator. The minority leader has his own views. The minority leader has his own views. Uh, it was just a motion raised by the majority leader that the nominees for the president be read uh, on the floor of the Senate and then be uh, submitted to committees uh, that are relevant to the, to, to the uh, nominees. So that's why it was raised and then submitted to, or passed to the committee. By, by tomorrow we will now receive a letter uh, submitting the names of those people for us to find a date when we will sit down and screen those candidates. So the minority leader has his views to see and uh, uh, finally, whatever we decide the end of uh, the flow of the Senate uh, will be the final say. Because the reference they're making is uh, to the relevant uh, law guiding appointment into an uh, subsection 2 uh, B of that uh, portion of the law says that anybody to be appointed uh, a member of the commission shall uh, in the B says be a person of unquestionable integrity and shall not be a member of yes. any political party. That's on one hand. On the other hand is uh, the subjection of the nomination of the president first and foremost to the Council of State for those who will be member of the board of INEC or the national commissioner. Yeah. Has the president submitted or committed that first before sending it to the National Assembly? Yeah. 
Well, to us, if the president submits a name to the National Assembly, we believe all other processes that are supposed to be done before submitting, uh, the, the president should have finished their own part and then submit to us. And when they bring to us, that is the time when we will do our own part. So presumably, all that is expected uh, about the clearance uh, from the section of the presidency it should have been done by now. And uh, secondly, there are other also criteria like the code of conduct, is their task clearance, and so on. All that are to be submitted with their CVs to the National Assembly. And uh, based on that, we'll look at those criteria. And then by what you raise now from the Constitution, we'll look at those sections of the Constitution and be able to uh, screen the candidates. Um, so another issue here in terms yeah. of the appointment, there seems to be some problems on, on the board of INEC. Uh, Starting from the national commissioners, there is a shortage, and this has been for several months. There are people of the school of thought that why don't you get people who are presently senior resident electoral commissioners to be national commissioners as we speak? The tenure of, of five years of all 27 recs out of the 36 appointed in 2017 are due. Uh, and it's been delayed, uh, and uh, they're, they're supposed to leave in another six months, if I'm right, uh, to the 2023 elections, which some people who are critically looking at what is happening in INEC have problem with. Because this is the same thing that has happened before. When you appoint people very close to election, they have tried to find their fit and trying to land a job before the elections. Are you worried about that kind of situation? Well, for several months... We have well, own uh, f uh, spaces well, for national commissioner, and RECs also are due to be out of jobs. Well, to be to be frank with you, yeah, there is there is the the issue is based on the time when each commissioner is being screened, not screened, square in as a commissioner. The times are different. That's why now we have this number of vacancies uh, that have not been uh, occupied. So the list we have about seven or eight now, and still there are some that are going to resign in the next or to finish their tenure in the next six months or so. Well, it is a continuous process. Uh, so we cannot just say stop it or change their tenure or at least line them up like when senators come at one time and go, a hundred of us come at one time and go at a particular time. But this one are uh, nominated uh, or elected nominated uh, officials of the government. So it depends on their timing. Uh, they have a limit, and they they have to go within the period specified for them to serve there. So we cannot say that because they are close election, they are learning. But all the people they are bringing, most of them, all, all of them, are qualified to be uh, either electoral commissioners or national commissioners of, uh, of, of INEC. They are qualified, so they could learn within a short period of time. But what they really were worried about is the, the, to have a quorum, to have a majority while they have meetings. Like where the numbers are less, and you find that uh, the number of commissioners they have now are not really enough to form a quorum in their discussions. So that they need us to clear these commissioners uh, and the national commissioners, electoral uh, commissioners, to join them and be part of the, uh, the process of uh, governing in, in that uh, institution. So, I mean, the reason why I'm asking this question is also for effectiveness and also for the issues mm. of um, uh, fairness because we see a situation in the ongoing extension of polling units and in uh, the planned um, uh, continuous voter registration, we see co national commissioners from the southern region monitoring the process in the northern region, which is against some of the laid down procedure of how INEC works. Isn't it your duty in the National Assembly to oversight over the executive that makes the nomination and appointment? Because a lot of people already have a problem the fact that the process, procedure through which the executive takes his nomination is faulted, is flawed, because it has to go to the Council of State first before it gets to the National Assembly. But it's coming to the National Assembly without yes. confirmation that it's gone through the Council of State. Well, well let, let, let me say it clearly. I think we should not look at this situation in the future, because you find that in such a situation that two com one commission has handled about two states, uh, he's been overstretched. But the issue is that we do not have those uh, vacancies occupied or at least people being approved for that vacancies. Therefore, what I'm suggesting in the future is that if your commissioner is leaving the next six months, 
the government should start preparing and given uh, submit a new name or a name that uh, could occupy that position as commissioner from X state or Y state. And uh, if the process takes longer in the assembly or other or otherwise before submission, then the, the delay may be uh, may not affect the tenor of of that commissioner. Maybe if he leaves immediately. By the time we have screened a candidate, he's ready to take to wait for about a month or so before the other person resigns and he take over that position. So there will be lack of, uh, there will be no problem of vacancy, I mean, uh, uh, unoccupied positions, whereby you have a commissioner running the, uh, his job for two commissioners. <coughs> so certainly we believe the, the executive should also change the time of when they will submit names of uh, anomalies. And we, from the National Assembly, we should try to act fast. Uh, the time we receive their names, we should be able to call them immediately and deliberate on 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 the candidates and uh, screen them and pass them or otherwise. Uh, what we tried in our own job is also uh, to put pressure on those who are supposed to do some of these things. We journalists, but it's also the yeah. job of the National Assembly to oversight the executive to get their jobs done because of the civic space and the democratic process. Thank you so much, Senator Cabrera Gaya. There in that in that process, in that process, in that process, we are also putting pressure on the executive to make sure they submit names as early enough for us to screen uh, any uh, nominee for the president uh, to take any other position. So we, we are putting pressure. You also, you are one of the major architects on putting pressure on politicians, and uh, we are taking that pressure to do our job well. Thank you, Senator, for coming tonight. Senator Kabiru Gaya, the chairman of INEC Thank Committee in the National Assembly and the former Kano State Governor. Thank you so much indeed. It's always a pleasure. So uh, don't forget the invitation you. that you Happy give us the update as soon as you get that signed, uh, the Electoral Act Amendment. So every Nigerian should keep you are free their to calendar. Invite me anytime you are ready. When, when, the calendar, when the project is done, when the, uh, the, uh, the bill is passed, you... I will let you know so you can invite me to the channel the television and then tell the Nigerians and the world uh, how far this, the National Assembly have done. Thank you. Yeah, so Nigerians, uh, keep your, mark your calendar. The Senator said, by the end of July, we should have an amended electoral act. Will they keep to that timeline? We'll all be here to keep pressure on those who are the M of Affairs. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching tonight. I'm Shion Kimale. Bye-bye.